Okay, straight on to assembly. I am working on the output shaft assembly today, and I'm going to skip a few little things that are mentioned in the Bentley. Uh, first big thing is uh, setting bearing preload for the output shaft. I had a friend do it. I just I didn't have the right shims and I didn't have the right torque wrench, the inch pound torque wrench for doing the turning torque. So I went ahead and had him do it. Took him like five minutes to do it. Pretty simple process, really. Uh, Volkswagen uses a test shim, which is a 0.65 millimeter shim. This is the bearing race that indexes, or that goes with this bearing right here on the end of the pinion. And what you do is you put a 0.65 millimeter test shim underneath this, drive the race in, install the output shaft, torque it down, and then do a end play measurement using a dial indicator. And then you add that to the shim added to the preload amount, which is 0.2 millimeters, and it gives you a total preload of 0.2 millimeters. So basically you're taking all of the play out of the shaft and adding 0.2 millimeters. And he did that for me just super fast. And uh, he handed it back to me assembled and the turning torque on it, it felt there was a drag on it. You could feel the drag on it. It took a little tiny bit of effort to get it to turn, but it didn't feel crunchy or any crap like that, like if you over tightened a wheel bearing or something. It felt really smooth. So kudos to him. He did it really fast and fairly cheap. He's a good guy. He knows what the hell he's doing. I don't. All right, enough of that. Go ahead and start throwing this thing back together. Output shaft, two new bearings. First thing is this freaky little washer. It's a shouldered washer and the shoulder faces the bearing. Throw that in there, I'll toss this in here. This is where the bearing rides. And then I've already cleaned and oiled some of this stuff because this is like take three. Uh, I keep messing up and then forgetting where I'm at, which will happen to you if you've never done this, I'm sure. Or maybe it's just me, who knows. Anyway, this is my first gear. Uh, it has a needle bearing in it and it just drops on as so with the uh, synchronizer cone, engagement cone right here, this face, this kind of tapered face facing up. It goes with the corresponding first gear synchro. You just drop that puppy on there. And then this is the operating sleeve for the first gear, second gear selection. Uh, operating sleeve, this is the synchro hub inside. It's got these little locking pieces with these little wire spring things, kind of holds it all together. And the Bentley manual is pretty explicit about where to put this. It says to use, or to put the wide shoulder, which is this shoulder, see how it's wider than that one, facing first gear. So it goes on like that. And this is the one that presses on. So I'm going to just kind of lay it in here, and then I'm going to go press it on. Uh, I'm not even going to film that. You, you can press this on. Just use whatever tool you have. I actually found an old bearing race that fit this perfect, and I used it to press this on. And you'll notice also while you're pressing it on that the locking tabs in the sleeve, the three locking tabs, index to these little grooves right here in the synchro. So make sure they go in there, otherwise you'll crush it, and you'll destroy a bunch of stuff, and it'll cost a bunch of money. So I'm going to cut scene. Be back in a second. All right. One minute later, everything's pressed together. Let's see what we got. Get that on there. Just making sure everything's kind of where it goes. Little locking tabs are flush. I got the synchro indexed. Go ahead and operate it. First gear works. Very cool. Next, according to Bentley is the keeper. So we gotta throw this little keeper guy on there. There's a groove right here for the keeper. Let me make sure we're still in frame, good. And let me go grab my tool. My ghetto snap ring pliers. They actually work really good for this. If a little finicky, but it still works really good. Works better than screwdrivers. If you're one of those hillbilly mechanics. Make sure that 
clip thing is seated. I'm always paranoid about clips like this seating. So I always just push on them to make sure they're all the way in. Yeah, it's all the way in. I'm using a random piece of stainless to beat on it. Pretty handy tool. Continuing on. Wipe the little dust rag lint things off of it. Hit it with this. Always have compressed air nearby when you're working on stuff like this to keep things clean. All right, Bentley says, uh, the three-piece synchro goes on. So this is the synchro that operates the second gear. And it's kind of an oddball, but not too bad. It's three pieces. There is a stainless, possibly, outside ring with little tabs, and they go on facing down. There's an inside brass synchro ring with these funky little tab ear things on it. It goes in there. And then all of that fits inside the big synchro, Oops, like that. You see it all kind of goes together like a little puzzle. And this whole assembly goes in here like this. And these little grooves, once again, index into the locking tabs. And then those stainless outer ring tabs, those three tabs, index with the next gear. Make sure I got the right one here. This is third gear. No, wrong one. Where's my gear? Okay, so I left second gear sitting in there on the press for some reason. Uh, anyway, second gear has these little cutouts that index with that inner ring, or sorry, the outer stainless ring with the tabs. Uh, you'll see how it goes in there. You just stick it in there and then move it around and it'll grab onto it. grabbed onto them. Now we can check for operation. Let's go ahead and engage first gear. Press down on the operating sleeve. First gear is spinning, second gear is loose. Let's engage second gear. Now second gear is engaged and first gear is loose. Yay, it works. Isn't that awesome? Okay, next step. We've got second gear on. There is a washer that goes on top of it. Must be that washer. That might be why that's sitting there, huh? It's cleaning. And then one of these. This is another one of these press jobs. But I already did this one time because I screwed up and had to take this thing off. Uh, you can actually get this on with a tiny bit of persuasion and a lot of heat. So I'm going to go grab the torch. I see no reason to set up the press for something so easy. Go ahead and heat this thing up. Hot and toasty. Goes right in. Seated. Good to go. So this is a, the Bentley calls this a thrust washer, which means it is a bearing surface, so always good to check for smooth operation. There's a little bit of play on that gear and it feels smooth. Very nice. Might as well drop a little oil in there too. Oh yeah, that feels good. All right. Thrust washer, sleeve thing, 22. That's got, yeah, I call it sleeve in the Bentley. And another roller bearing and then a third gear. Needle bearings in there. 
good gear. I think this is where I stopped cleaning parts, so we got to go through the cleaning regimen here. to bear with me on this. We're doing this kind of in real time, just so you get a, a, a vague idea of what it takes to do this, how much time and effort you got to put forth. So I'm oiling the third gear synchro. It's nice and oily. It goes right there. And the next is the third gear operating sleeve. If you couldn't guess that, I got to go clean this too. Just when you think it's clean, there's <laughs> six pounds of dirt that come out of it. That is super clean. It's so clean, everything's like rattly and tinny feeling because there's no oil in there. Awesome. So this is similar to the other operating sleeve, the, the one two operating sleeve. It's got these little locking tabs and it also faces a certain direction. And the Bentley says this little tiny chamfer you won't be able to see it on camera, but if you flip it upside down, there's no chamfer on the splines. There's a tiny little chamfer on these splines. And let me get it off of the book and tell you what it says verbatim. So assembling Synchro Hub figure 22. Okay. I have to move the microphone. Figure 22. Chamfer faces towards fourth gear. Okay. Chamfer is right here. Throw some oil on this thing. So chamfer is going to be facing up in this particular arrangement. Make sure I got this assembled correctly. Yes. All right. So this thing also feels like it presses on. So I'm gonna cut camera and go stick this in the press and press it in. Boy, I'm gonna sing the praises of that 12-ton Harbor Freight bench shop press thing. It's uh, turning out to be quite handy for this job. I am stoked about it. So that pressed right on. That synchro indexed again into those little locking pins, these locking pieces. Moving on. Oh, let me look at the parts I got left. Oh yeah. So I guess this is fourth gear. And there is a synchro, a needle bearing, etc. It's the same kind of thing. Go ahead and clean this. Well, that's really a good quality, effective way to clean things. Brake cleaner and then really high compressed air. It's really, really making everything shiny and nice. Enough of that shit. Let's oil this thing down. Don't forget the bottom. There is a thrust surface right here with little oil grooves in it. And that rides on this thing kind of got its own built-in thrust washer. And synchro, same situation. These have little grooves to index with the locking pieces, like that. And then this guy just drops on. Oh! Bearing sleeve thing. Gotta put that on. Another one of those press-on jobs. Hmm. I got a feeling I could just heat this one up and pop it on just like I did the other one. I'm gonna go ahead and do that.
just gonna double check this and make sure I got it right. Triple check. Yeah, that's right. Alright, fully seated. Throw some oil on it. Put this on, fourth gear. And let's check it for operation. Third gear is in operation, everything else is loose. Oops, that fell down. <laughs> Good, loose, 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 operating. Good, all right, now let's check fourth gear. Nice, everything else is loose. Everything works, good. All right, next is a thrust washer, yet another one. Pop it on there. And the very last bit is the sleeve for the internal bearing. Another one of these heat jobs. Oh yeah, this, ooh, that's hot. Slid right on, didn't even have to beat on it. Just make sure it's fully seated. Tap on it a little bit. All right, that's it. That concludes building the output shaft assembly. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start assembling everything else. Um, you'll get to see in the next little bit that I've got a new fifth gear. This is a brand new Italian-made thing from eBay. Uh, you could just search the 658 fifth gears and find them. And I'm really stoked about this. This is going to be a lot of fun. Or maybe not. I guess it drops RPMs on the highway, so it won't be that fun. But with the, uh, the setup I've got, I think it's going to be pretty fun. So see you on the next one.